Hi there. In today's tutorial, we're going to discuss um, how to connect uh, I squared C devices to a microcontroller. I'm using the Teensy 4.1, um, but this would work for any of the Teensies or really any of the microcontrollers. I uh, will be discussing some things that are relevant to the Teensy 3.5, 3.2s, and also for the 4.1s and 4.0s. But it will work for for most um, most of what I'm going to tell you is going to work for. Uh, from most motherboards. So uh, we're going to start with this little guy here, which, which is a little LCD screen. And you've you probably have seen these. Um, it goes, it's 16 pins, okay? And you don't need an I squared C board like this on the back to, to actually use them. The internet is filled with tutorials, and I have several, on how to connect uh, just a regular LCD screen to your to your motherboard without an I squared C. The problem is you have to have a ton of wires uh, to connect those. And so uh, if you spring, you know, it's maybe three dollars or so for one of these little boards here. It's an I squared C board, and it allows you to connect and control with only four pins, and it gives you actually more functionality. So this is a uh, 16 by 2, which means it has 16 columns and two rows. And then I have a bigger one here, which is 20 by 4. And it also is a, has a little I squared C device. And then I'm going to show you how to connect uh, three devices together, these two uh, LCD screens and then this real-time clock RTC. And it's also an I squared C device. The I squared C devices have four pins and they go this is your ground pin and this is your vcc that's your power and your sda is the data the data line and this goes signal power ground um, which is why i like this patent robotics motherboard you can see here it's got signal power ground uh, male header pins sticking up there and it makes it really easy to connect so we just plug in, I've got a little three conductor cable here, and I've got my ground wire connected to ground and power to VCC. And then this yellow wire is going to be my SDA pin. It's going to be my data pin. Okay. But that leaves a fourth pin. And so then you just grab just a singleton. Okay. And you plug that into the SCL, which is going to be your clock. And I'll show you how to find out where to connect these on the um, on your motherboard. Okay, but that's that's the, the gist of it, and I'm going to walk you through. It may be one long video, which will be kind of long, or it may be several small videos, but the, the gist is I'm going to connect just a single one, and then I'm going to connect a different one, okay? I'll uh, show you how to do that, and then I'm going to connect these two together, and then I'm going to connect all three of them together and I'll show you the process on how that works. But before we do that, we got to jump over to the code and um, follow that. So um, this code is, uh, I, I named it LCD I squared C, and it is found in the description below. And, uh, but this is what I'm going to be, I'm going to be discussing right now. So I bought my boards from Amazon, uh, the 16 by two here and the 20 by four here. Before we get started, we really have to install the Liquid Crystal library, and there are two ways to do that. One is to go and manage libraries. We're going to search for Liquid Crystal I squared C, and there's going to be lots of these libraries for LCDs and uh, I squared C LCD uh, libraries. Uh, but the one we're looking for is by this guy here. So here's how to do it. Tools, manage libraries. And then if I do a search for liquid crystal I squared C, pop up here and you can see there are a whole bunch of them here. You want to scroll to you find this one right here. And then you can check, click on install. And now that library is installed. Okay. Um, the other alternative, if you are one of my students, you can download the uh, zip file and you can grab that from uh, my Canvas page, our Canvas page. That's under Files, and then there's a folder called Modules and Libraries, Then you can download this zip file. Mac users, you might, once it's downloaded, you might need to recompress it as a zip. It must be a zip file. And then uh, throw that in your Modules folder, and then from the Arduino IDE, you can go to Sketch, uh, include a library, and then you add your zip, zip library and find it on your computer. Click on that. There are so many ways to connect and to control these devices that it can be daunting when you get online and take a look at it. The other problem is that 
maybe your code is running, right? And and you think everything is working great, but nothing shows up on the screen. But there's a little Phillips head screwdriver. This is a potentiometer. You can adjust the brightness and the contrast of this of the screen. And so if if what you're if you think the code should be working, uh, you might need to adjust that little that little the brightness knob and just turn it a little bit, you know, back and forth until you see it. There are a lot of variables here, so we'll try to get all your questions answered here. I've put some links here, uh, help getting set up with the LCD. There's some other things you need to worry about that each of these LCD screens have an address, but there are two main addresses, OX27 and uh, 0x3f. So these are your two main default addresses. The ones that I have, this is the main address. And when you get on the Amazon page, it will tell you what the what the main address is. And you'll see that that shows up in the code. All right, but since we're using a Teensy, let's take a look at the Teensy pinout. And because I'm using the Teensy 4.1, we are looking for, remember, the back of the the back of the board will help you. There's an uh, an SDA, okay, which is the data line, and then the SCL, which is the clock line. Okay, so SDA and SCL. And here's the, our SDA. This is our main one here. It's A4, which is pin 18, and the SCL is A5, which is pin 19. This is the default. You don't have to set them up. They're already set up for I squared C. The cool thing about about I squared C is that if you wanted to run, I think the number is 127. I think you can run 127 devices off of one I squared C port. And I'm going to show you how to do that later on uh, in this video or in a subsequent video. But for right now, we're just going to connect these two. So our SDA pin is A4 and our SCL pin is A5. So the this motherboard by Patent Robotics makes it super easy to connect all kinds of things, especially three conductor cables like so. So A4, um, I've got this little guy here. And so, oops, double check that that works. So this is, and you can see the board is kind of lit up because I've connected it to power. So signal pin is toward the middle, ground pin is on the outside. And now we have the singleton, which is our SCL pin. And that needs to be A5, so that's going to be the yellow signal pin right above it. Okay, so I've got it connected like so. I'm going to double check that SDA is in fact in A4. SDA is in fact in A4. Okay, so it's, it's set up there. Well done. And inside my little header, you can see that I've also got that uh, set up there as well. You need to include that liquid crystal library that we just installed. And then to set up the liquid crystal object, this is it right here. This part in red, of course, you have to type exactly as it's as it's written. This little guy here is the name of our LCD. It's typically just called LCD. Okay, you can see in another video, I'm going to call another one LCD2. This is the address that I was talking about. This is the the hex address for the LCD screen. Again, you can find it online. Whoever whoever sells it to you can tell you what the address is. OX27 or OX3F uh, are common addresses. If you don't know what the address is, you can run scanner. Let me just show you how that works right now. So I, I know that the address is, is this guy right here. I know this is the correct address, but if in case you don't know, or in case this address does not work for you, you can try OX3F. And if that doesn't work for you, uh, then you're kind of stuck. But if you go to, so go to File, Examples, and then scroll all the way down. It takes a long time. It's down here, Wire. And under Wire, there's a scanner, a scanner sketch. Just run it. And then I am going to open up the serial monitor, and there it is. So it found our... LCD at OX27. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to unplug just the SCL, uh, just that one wire. I'm going to unplug that one wire, and now it's going to say no devices found. I'm going to plug the uh, SCL, the clock wire, back in, and there it is again. 
Okay, so if you had multiple devices, it would show you, you know, the multiple addresses. The problem is all of the LCD screens that I have have this address. So if I plugged in, you know, three of these LCD screens, it would think there was only one board attached because they all have the same address. I'll address that um, <laughs> later on and show you how you can get multiple boards to have different addresses. Okay, so going back to the code. Just ignore everything that's kind of commented out. This is just some information here for you. Ignore these for right now. Let's get to the setup. Okay, so um, this means that while the serial monitor is closed, I keep looping. So it really pauses uh, the code until until you're ready to move on. And again, ignore this part here. You should see something that says initialize and print a welcome message. And here it is. So this is the name of our object. We called it LCD. Remember, we did that right here. Okay, so whatever you name it there is what you're going to call it. Uh, you need to initialize the LCD board like so. And then you can turn on the backlight. This is really important. To set the cursor on the LCD, you, you type in basically a, an X and a Y coordinate here. This is the column. Okay, that's your, kind of your X, and this is your row. They start at zero, zero. So if I wanted to put something in the top left corner, I would do it at zero, zero. I don't want that. I want it to be centered. So I know that if I do it at two, hello world will show up kind of centered in my screen. So you set the cursor with this command, and then you LCD print some string, in this case, hello world. Now I want to move the cursor down below, all right? So I still want to be in column two. Okay, the first number is a column, but I, now I'm in row number one, which is our second row, because zero, zero is, is the first one. And then the second thing I want to do is I want to print, you know, start me up. This is going to delay for three seconds, okay, and then we're going to get to the loop. But let's just see how, how this appears. Okay, I'm going to close the serial monitor because I want to be able to start it whenever I open it. I'm going to upload the code, and now when I run it, Okay, we're done uploading. All right, I'm going to open up the serial monitor. Okay, so as soon as I open up the serial monitor, this is going to uh, change, initializing, hello world, start me up. Okay, so that stays on there for three seconds, and then we print the time. So uh, you can't really see that very well, I apologize. Incidentally, let's just go ahead and talk about this now. There's a little a little jumper here, okay? This is the LED uh, shorting block. So if I, if I pull this off, then the backlight turns off, physically turns off. You can still see the words are there. It's just, it's just really hard to read. So we can put that backlight back on. Okay, so now let's go figure out how we can do this. Perhaps you already know. So the loop command, everything, basically, uh, you know how to do everything now. Now we say print the time. This is going to print to the serial monitor, okay? Uh, we can clear the screen with lcd.clear. We can set the cursor again. You need to always be thinking about where the cursor is. We're going to set it in the top left-hand corner, again, column and row. Uh, we're going to print the string millis. And then we're going to stay on the first row, which is the zeroth row. And then we're going to move over nine spaces, nine, nine columns, and we're going to print millis. Millis is just a, a running time of how many milliseconds since the code started. We're going to delay for 1,000 milliseconds or one second, and then we'll do it again. All right, so, so let's see what that looks like. So we can see here that the code has been running. I cover it up. Can you see it better? Um, the code has been running for about 150,000 milliseconds or 150, 160 seconds. All right, there it is. There's your first lesson in how to use the LCD screen. Uh, super simple. The hardest thing is going to be hello world. It's going to just be getting it to getting it to run. And again, if you if you can't see something or if you see a bunch of blocks here, there'll be some just a long string of white uh, LCD blocks. Flip it over, grab yourself a little tiny screwdriver and just and just gently adjust it while you're looking and this should pop up into view. If you still can't get it, double check your connections. If you're not using the Teensy, make sure you know which pins are your SDA and your SCL pins. Make sure you're getting power 
if, if you're getting power, the, the board should light up like this, and that indicates that you, you're getting power and ground connecting. But just make sure that these guys are connected. If you're still having trouble, uh, you can upload the code again. Um, if you're still having trouble, I would run scanner and just make sure that, that you have the right address. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but obviously this is 16 columns and two rows. So this is, it takes three parameters to set up an LCD object. All right, well, that's it for the first video and that's getting it set up. In the next video, I'm gonna demonstrate how you can plug your LCD screen into the secondary port, the alternative port on the Teensy 3.2 or 3.5. This is a 3.2 and that's what I'm going to show you in the next video. If something else is using the primary I squared C port, you can move it to the alternative one and that's what I'm going to show you in the next video. It's maybe not so handy all the time, but it's kind of nice to know. Hope that that was helpful. I'll see you soon.